Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The court has before it case number 623243, State of Ohio v. Joseph McAlton. President of the court is the defendant. Accompanying him are his two uh, standby counsel, Mr. John Luskin and Mr. Kevin Cafferty. Appearing on behalf of the State of Ohio, Mr. Brian Radigan, Mr. Russell Ty, Mr. Chris Schroeder, and Mr. Carl Mazzone. We are here today to impose sentence upon the defendant. The procedure we shall use is as follows. First, I'm going to inquire of the defendant if he's received copies of the pre-sentence report as well as the mitigation report, and ask if there are any additions or corrections. Next, the prosecutor will speak. Uh, we have issues, legal issues to deal with, such as merger and possibly proffering some additional evidence onto, into the record. Third, the defendant will be allowed his right of allocation, allocution rather, where he can make another statement. Following that, the court will take a brief recess so that the court can factor in his allocution with the other information that the court has gleaned from the uh, mitigation hearing held last week as well as the two reports that the court has reviewed, and thereby weighed in total. The court will then reconvene for uh, statements from the victims, if any, and then we will proceed to the sentencing. So at this point in time, uh, on behalf of the state of the first question, Mr. Uh, McAlpin, have you received a copy of those two reports? Uh, no, Your Honor. You haven't received a copy of those reports? No, Your Honor. Please.
Mr. McCappen, any additions or corrections to the reports? Um, no, Your Honor. Okay, very well then. Mr. Uh, Schroeder. Yes, Judge. Uh, briefly, just a couple of things that the state would like to proffer for the record at this point for purposes of appellate review. First would be State's Exhibit 2000, which are approximately 2,000 pages of children and family services records. Those were provided to the defendant in discovery on March 19, 2019. Second would be State's Exhibit 2001. That's approximately 4,000 pages of prison records from the ODRC. Those are provided to the defendant in discovery on July 25, 2018. Third, State's Exhibit 2002 is a competency evaluation of the defendant from 2007. That was provided in discovery on April 8. State's Exhibit 2003 is a sanity evaluation report of the defendant from 2007. That was provided in discovery on April 8. And State's Exhibit 2004 is a mitigation of penalty report for the defendant, also from 2007. That was also provided in discovery on April 8th. Additionally, we're not proffering these two things at this time, but the record should also be clear that the defendant proffered for the court's consideration uh, the PSI that was prepared in this case, as well as Dr. Radio's mental uh, examination report. So those are part of this court's review. Uh, with respect to the five exhibits that we've proffered, 2000 through 2004, uh, those will not be considered by the court as part of its uh, sentencing determination, but they will be part of the record for purposes of appellate review, just so that any reviewing court knows what exactly that evidence was, when it was provided, and that the defendant chose not to present it. So it's not a mystery, and it's not floating around out there to be discovered at some later time. Thank you. And I will put those exhibits on the same flash drive as the exhibits that were submitted to the jury rather than printing all of that out. So the record should also be clear that as I speak here right now, those exhibits are not currently on this flash drive. I'm just adding them at this time electronically. Very well. Mr. Mazzone, please. Thank you, Your Honor. With regard to merger, Thank you, Your Honor. Um, with regard to merger, uh, there, the defendant was convicted in, I believe, of t uh, 26 counts, but there is some issues of merger. Uh, all four of the aggravated murders uh, charges in counts one through four, uh, the state would elect to proceed to sentencing on counts one and two. Count one is the aggravated murder B uh, involving Trina Toma Lakuznik. The state would opt to uh, sentence then on count two, which is also the uh, murder B. Uh, aggravated murder B with Michael Kuznick, uh, counts three and four would merge. Your Honor, then, uh, with regard to counts five through eight, which are the aggravated robbery counts, um, counts seven and eight merged with counts five and six, and the state elects today to sentence on counts seven and eight. Count seven applies to Michael Kuznick, count eight to Trina Tomala Kuznick. With regard to counts 9 through 12, these are the aggravated burglaries. 9 and 10 merge with 11 and 12. The state elects today to sentence on counts 11 and 12. 11 uh, pertaining to Trina Tomala Kuznick and count 12 with Michael Kuznick. Your Honor, counts uh, 13 and 14 are kidnappings, 15 and 16 are murder, and counts 17 through 20 are all felonious assault. All of those offenses are allied offenses of similar import and merge with the aggravated murders as well as the aggravated robberies and aggravated burglaries. Um, Your Honor, the state uh, 
We'll proceed to sentencing then on counts 21, having weapons under disability. Both counts 23 and 24 are grand theft motor vehicles. They do not merge. However, Your Honor, count 25, injuring animals, merges with count 26, cruelty to animals, and the state will elect to sentence on count 26. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so let the record reflect. We're proceeding to sentencing on the following counts. <clears throat> 1, 2, 7, 8, 11, 12, 21, 23, 24, and 26. Okay. Mr. McAlpin, you have the right of allocution. Now is the time. Anything you care to say on this case? It's not really much I can say. I just want to thank you for your patience with me. And just uh, well, I'm probably going to continue. I don't know if people are tired of hearing that, but it's not really much I can say. I, I thank the court for its time, the patient. I also thank the prosecution for its time and patient, even though it turned out the way it did. And that's pretty, pretty much I want to say. Well, no, on top of that, also, Dealing with the death penalty, I know I've been saying a lot about either liberty or death, and I've been speaking with my family, and that's been very selfish of me because I wasn't doing, I wasn't saying and thinking about their reaction towards it, and they didn't really explain to me how it affected them until just recently, and I think that was like very ignorant of me to be saying such. Even if I was fighting the fight, I was fighting. I think I was very angry when you say much, say that. And I would like to apologize to the courts and also my family for such work because it's a very serious scenario. My life is very important to me, and it's not just something that I would just want to throw away, especially not taking my family through that by me being on death row and them having to live with the fact this is what you asked for. You can simply say this in court. You can simply say, is it the liberty or death? And that was just very selfish of me. And I just would like to show more respect for that. And I'd like to say, once again, I apologize for the course and so on. Thank you, Mr. McAlpin. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to take a brief recess so that I can uh, reflect upon what Mr. McAlpin has just told me, factor that into what I have already reviewed about this case. And when I come back out, I'll be in a position to announce my decision relative to the council one and two, and um, so thank you for your indulgence. I appreciate it. Uh, we rise. Oh, Last thing, please, for the record. Um, I'd like to renew my old motion for asking for your facts and findings or conclusions of law dealing with the uh, new trial, uh, I mean, the motion for new trial here we had on May 13th. I said in our previous uh, meeting, I just want to renew that uh, motion. I haven't forgotten about it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome.
bring them down here. Once again, be seated, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I thank you for your patience. In every jury trial, the court tells the jury to evaluate the case on the law as it is given to them. The court admonishes them not to apply their own conception of what they believe the law should be, I can follow no different directive. On Thursday of last week, the jury found that the aggravating circumstances outweighed the mitigating factors beyond reasonable doubt, and therefore found the verdict of death to be appropriate. The defendant on numerous occasions indicated to the court that he would not be presenting mitigation evidence. Upon announcement of the verdict, he indicated that he did want to have an evaluation performed. The court prevailed upon the court psychiatric clinic to prepare a mitigation report. The defendant issued a subpoena to have the doctor appear in court. When it was time to call the doctor to the stand, the defendant rested, much to the surprise and the chagrin of the court. A sidebar conference was held and the defendant, acting pro se, stood fast and rested. Thereafter, 
Closing arguments were heard and the jury charged. The jury verdict was returned and read. The jury was polled and discharged. The defendant then requested that the court review both the pre-sentence investigation report and the mitigation report, neither of which were submitted to the jury. The court did review these documents and has evaluated this case in conjunction with the mitigation phase and the mitigation factors of 2929.04b of the Ohio Revised Code, as well as the statements adduced herein today. In addition to the mitigating factors in ORC 2929.04b, the court has considered the statements of six family members, all of whom relate that the defendant had a tough childhood. His older sister indicated that at age five, he found his mother's gun and shot himself in the leg. The mitigation report prepared by the court psychiatric clinic adds some more significant insight. He found his mother's body after she OD'd on heroin when he was 19. He was hit on the head with a brick at age 12 and suffers from seizures. At age nine, he was repeatedly raped by his mother's male friend. According to a 2008 psych evaluation, the defendant has chronic problems with anger and has little regard for authority. There was a suicide attempt at the Euclid Jail in 2006. Dr. Radio diagnosed him as having post-traumatic stress disorder. And finally, a 2018 evaluation at the Moritz Forensic Unit at Twin Valley Behavioral Health Care observed the defendant interacting appropriately and logically with staff and others. Notwithstanding this, these mitigatory observations, the court, after carefully weighing the statutory mitigation elements, the testimony of the defendant's witnesses, the unsworn statement of the defendant, and the pre-sentence report and psychological evaluation report, the court finds that the aggravating circumstances do outweigh the mitigating factors with proof beyond reasonable doubt. At this point in time, Mr. Mazzone. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, with regard to the sentencing on the other eight counts, the non-homicide counts that remain, first and foremost, Your Honor, the state of Ohio, we're only here today as a collective effort and a team effort, and the state wants to thank the Cleveland Police Department, including the Homicide Unit, the Crime Scene Unit, the Scientific Investigation Unit, and the Fifth District, the FBI, the Medical Examiner's Office, and the Cuyahoga County Regional Forensic Science Laboratory. Without these entities, we can't put a thorough case on as we did in this matter, and we can't produce and establish and present evidence as overwhelming as we were able to do in this particular case. Before the state says its piece, Your Honor, I know this would be an appropriate time for family members typically to address the court. Nobody from the family wishes to address the court in open court at this time. However, Your Honor, I don't want you to think that they certainly aren't feeling the effects of this, Your Honor. You've seen them sitting in the courtroom every single day of this trial from the time we began the general voir dire until up to and including today behind me. Your Honor, over the last two years, the Kuznicks, the Zukowskis, they've been with us every step of the way and have been more than patient, and we've had their full support, but they do not wish to address in open court today. However, Your Honor, as you're well aware, the murders of Michael and Trina and the subsequent closing, the necessary closing of Mr. Carr's, had a great effect on the North Collinwood neighborhood. And the businesses in the area, the families in the area, and Your Honor, at this time, on behalf of the neighborhood, on behalf of the citizens of Collinwood, Councilman Mike Polensic would like to address the court. Thank you. Councilman? Thank you, Your Honor. I, too, would like to thank the jury, Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael Malley and his magnificent team of prosecutors, Detective Echols, members of CPD, the Homicide Unit, the Fifth District, and all the other law enforcement agencies that were involved in this process. Your Honor, from day one, this was never about vengeance. It's been about justice. 
I stood there on that Good Friday night as they carried out Mike and Trina and Axel in body bags. I was there. I saw the pictures from the corner. I saw what this individual did to them, the viciousness of the crime. He is a demonic killer, a demonic killer. It's one thing to rob somebody, but it's another thing to do what he did. Him and his cohorts, what they are are predators. They prey upon our communities, upon our businesses, upon our citizens, and as we try to stabilize and rebuild our neighborhoods and our city, this is what we have to be confronted with. The North Shore Collinwood area, the greater Collinwood community is a great neighborhood. This crime on Good Friday not only devastated the family and tore that family apart, it devastated the community because they didn't know, the businesses didn't know who was going to be next, if there's going to be somebody else. It could have been somebody else. It was Mike and Trina, it was their night to be preyed upon by him and his cohorts. What we want, Judge, and what we're asking for is justice on behalf of the people, of the community, and on behalf of Mike and Trina's family. He'll, 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 he'll be around tomorrow. Mike and Trina aren't. They are not there. This, I saw what happened to that family. I saw what happened to that business. I've known this family for almost 40 years, how they contributed to our community, how they were supportive of one event, one activity after another. Since that brutal murder, murders, that business has been closed. Other businesses have been apprehensive whether to invest in the community. But you know what, we're not going to let him and the other two parasites that were with him destroy our neighborhood. We're not going to let them destroy communities. We're going to rise above it, not only in this community, but across the entire city. That's the message we're looking for the court to send today, that when you commit these atrocities, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And all the work that these fine folks did here, all the investigators, was not in vain. And to remember what this family has gone through. I know how many times I've talked to them on the phone and have heard and it, 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 the, the pain in their voice, saw what happened, was there. We want and deserve justice on behalf of Mike and Trina and Axel on behalf of the greater community. Thank you. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court again. Um, Your Honor, with regard to the non-capital uh, counts, the, the eight remaining counts, the state is here today to first ask for consecutive sentences. Uh, Your Honor, uh, pursuant to the Ohio Revised Code, we believe that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime, not only to punish the offender, and that they would not be disproportionate to the seriousness of his conduct and to the danger he uh, poses to the public. Your Honor, you heard during the mitigation phase uh, of this trial that the defendant has a long and sordid criminal history a juvenile record of at least 13 adjudications, and a trip to ODYS did nothing to rehabilitate him. As a young adult, he committed a burglary, was placed on probation, and while on probation, uh, went ahead and robbed somebody at knife point. The defendant did eight and a half years in prison and still was not rehabilitated. He came out and six months later on Good Friday, on April 14th of 2017, walked into Mr. Carr's on Lakeshore Boulevard, and ended the lives of two innocent people, killed a dog, and forever altered the lives of their family. Your Honor, the third prong that you need to consider is that you must find that one of the three statutory factors are present, and that's that the offender committed one or more of the offend, uh, offenses while he was under post-release control for a prior offense. Well, he was. He was on post-release control for his 2008 burglary. At least two of the multiple offenses were committed as part of one or more courses of conduct, and the harm caused by those was so great or unusual that no single prison term uh, would adequately reflect the seriousness. Your Honor, he killed two people. For what? As Mr. Schroeder stated last week, for some cash and two used cars to end two lives and a dog. And that the offender's criminal, uh, history of criminal conduct demonstrates that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crimes. It's been abundantly clear, Your Honor. All three of these prongs, of which you need only meet one, apply to Joseph McAlpin. The one thing we didn't hear today 
Your Honor, was any remorse for the crime. We didn't hear any condolences to the family. The only ones we heard were the half-hearted attempts while questioning witnesses, making his self-serving unsworn statement, and in his closing argument. And the one thing that he repeatedly talked about during his argument was family, that the state's going to commit an aggravated murder with prior calculation and design of him without considering his family or the fact that he has kids or grandkids or that he's a son and a brother or, a nep or an uncle and a nephew. Well, Your Honor, the defendant is sitting there today because of his actions, his choices. Colin, Corinne, and young Kane are without a mother, a father, a stepfather, a stepmother because of his actions through no fault of their own. They're without a dog, a family dog that was loved by Colin, used to go with him everywhere because of his actions through no fault of Colin's, through no fault of Corinne's, through no fault of Kane's or any of their other loved ones. Michael and Trina were a son and a daughter. They were an aunt and an uncle. They also had people that loved them. And you heard testimony, Your Honor, through the course of five weeks. Mr. Cars was a, like a family. It was a second home, as Colin called it. One of the ironic things about the timing of this trial was not only were we in session on the two-year anniversary of the homicides on April 14th, but Randy Kuznick opened Mr. Cars on April 1st of 1977. So we sat through this trial that effectively closed that business forever on the uh, 42nd anniversary of its opening. You heard Colin testify that they had repeat customers for years and years. Something was wrong with the car, bring it back. Mike, Butch, one of them would fix it. It was almost like a lifetime warranty. You saw the people that they dealt with. You heard testimony from Daryl Sanders, the last person who had any contact with either Michael or Trina when he spoke with Trina at 5.30 p.m. on April 14th to tell her there was a problem with the title. He had known them for 10 years. He was still buying cars from them. In fact, he thought he may have paid too much for a used minivan, but still had no problem calling them, and they decided they'd work it out on Monday. You heard from Albert Martin. Albert's led a rough life, but you heard that Mike and Trina kept him around to do odd jobs around the dealership because it kept him out of trouble. It kept him off drugs. It was something for him to do. Your Honor walked through that dealership on the jury view. You saw Michael and Trina's Ford Focus that you saw in the video that was parked out on Lakeshore Boulevard. And you saw that Corinne and Kane's Easter baskets were still sitting in the back seat of that car two years later. The family that will never be the same are both families. But the striking difference, Your Honor, is that Mr. McAlpin's family won't be the same because of Mr. McAlpin's choices, because of his actions, and through no fault of the Kuznicks and the Zakowskis and their loved ones and their children, they will never see or speak with their loved ones again. And every year, regardless of whether it's April 14th or at the end of March, Good Friday will always have a significance to them. So they get it double. They get a Good Friday and on April 14th, another holiday without their family members. Your Honor, the lasting effects that this case is going to have on the families of Michael and Trina necessitate consecutive sentences. The state would ask that you sentence on each of those eight counts a maximum possible sentence and run them each consecutive to each other. Thank you. Okay. One housekeeping matter. We've got uh, one year and three year firearm specifications for merger. Your Honor, each of those aggravated murder counts would have a three year firearm specification. Uh, pursuant to revised code 292914B1G, Your Honor is required to run the two most serious firearm specifications for aggravated murder, aggravated burglary, or aggravated robbery consecutive to one another and everything else. So we would ask that after those first two, I would agree that they, they would merge. Okay, and you prefer to be set, have it set go forward under the three year run spec? Correct. So be. Thank you, Your Honor. Three. Okay, the court's going to proceed to impose sentence at this time. With regard to count number one, the aggravated murder of Trina Tamola Kuznick, the court's going to impose a sentence of death. 
plus three years on firearm specification. Count number two for the aggravated murder of Michael Kuznick, death, plus three years on the firearm specification. Count number eight, aggravated robbery. This involves the robbery of Trina. 11 years plus three years for the gun specification, consecutive to each other. Did I say count eight? Yes. yes. Thank you. Count number seven, I'm going a little out of order here. Aggravated robbery of Michael, uh, 11 years plus three years for the firearm specification. Count number 11, aggravated burglary on Trina, 11 years plus three years for the gun specification. Count number 12, aggravated burglary of Mike, 11 years plus three years on the firearm specification. Having a weapon while under disability, count 21, 36 months. Count 23 and 24, both grand theft, 18 months each. And count number 26, cruelty to animals, 12 months. Counts 21, 23, 24, and 26 do not have any specifications attached there too. With regard to the case uh, at Chief, obviously counts 7, 8, 11, 12, 21, 23, 24, and 26 will in fact be served consecutive to each other. And this is necessary to properly protect the public from any future crimes that the defendant might commit and are proportionate to the seriousness of the offense. And finally, the court does observe, uh, as stated in the pre-sentence report, that the defendant was on post-release control when he committed the offense and does have an extensive criminal history. Is there anything further? I don't think I've overlooked anything, but double check now, please. that the aggravating circumstances outweigh the mitigation in both counts one and two applies to each? That's correct. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. Yeah, I didn't say both counts, but yeah, that was what I was trying to imply. Your Honor, also there, I mean, I know it may be a mood issue, but post-release control? I was just going to take care of that, in fact, yeah. Uh, five years mandatory post-release control relative to counts 7, 8, 11, and 12. Three years post-release control with regard to counts 21, 23, 24, and 26. Obviously, five years would be uh, guiding and it kind of moot, but nonetheless, I think that properly takes care of all the sentences. So, what do you think? We're done? Okay, Mr. Um, McAlpin, you do have the right to appeal this case. You have the right to have transcripts prepared. If you cannot afford the cost of appeal, the court will appoint um, or will pay for the cost of uh, preparation of transcript and order the documents prepared without cost. And you have the right to have a notice of appeal timely filed on your behalf. Mr. McAlpin, I assume you want this case appealed. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Okay. And um, unless you indicate otherwise later, the court will appoint Thomas Ryan to represent you. And because this is capital, I will appoint Bob Dixon to be a second appeals attorney on this. And Tom, um, excuse me, you already said Thomas Ryan. Thomas Ryan, R I E. I had him before we. That's not we had him before we didn't. We had a. Can we have a brief sidebar on that, guy? Certainly. Yeah. I don't know who I'm approaching. Yeah, you're still in this. We're going to appoint Bob Dixon to represent you. I'll appoint a second when I review the assigned counsel uh, to, to see who is appeal eligible and has the uh, necessary background. One, la one last matter that was brought up at sidebar is that it's kind of silly under this case, but uh, if you violate the terms and conditions of post-release control, uh, any violation will result in a traditional prison time under this case number not to exceed 50%. Again, that which the trial court has put into place. Okay. And also, uh, also, Your Honor, for the record, just 
facts and findings and conclusion of law for the hearing we had on the 13th? Absolutely. Absolutely. That I ever forgot about you. Anything else? Um, one more question. Well, you are indigent. Yeah, we had gas for yeah. Okay. Uh, court costs will be suspended in this case. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Please rise.